Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mildra, and I will be your gaming monk for the evening. You may be raising an eyebrow at the numbering structure in this video. Don't worry, that's natural. Videos like this are the reason why I introduced the numbering structure as I did. To give an open door to cover things I didn't previously, or to go over expansions to things previously reviewed. In my Anima review, there was a lot that I left out. In part because I felt myself getting dangerously close to my old Let's Read style, and also because I ended up biting myself in the ass by trying to cover the entire RPG line. That said, I mentioned in my original review that it was perplexing to have expansions referencing Core Xset, but that Core Xset itself did not get any translation. Well, thanks to a bit of digging, I found the closest thing we'll get to that, at least at the time of this recording. I should note that I'm covering the major changes with this, and not minor corrections or similar errata. Obviously, that means that there's some spoilers if you didn't watch the original Anima review. If you did not, pause the video now, go back and watch it, and then continue on. We'll start with character creation. The biggest change is the natural bonus. Originally, you could add your characteristic bonus a second time to a skill. In X set, you can add a bit more into the two forms. First, you gain a plus 10 special bonus to five different skills. Second, you can choose one physical skill and one mental skill and add its characteristic bonus again. This is definitely an improvement, as it means skills aren't shafted as much as they were in vanilla. It also lets there be a slightly better spread of skills. Secondary abilities has a few alterations as well. While Ritual Calligraphy is added in as a creative skill, many of the physical skills change as well. Athleticism can now be checked to allow for temporary boosts to movement, running, and maximum move duration. Swim checks can decrease the penalty for movement in water. Jump checks have a similar effect that Athleticism does for movement values. And Feats of Strength checks allow for a modifier to be placed on Strength for one non-combat action. These changes go quite a ways towards making the physical skills have some weight, and thus gets my seal of approval. Besides, it means we could make characters who can jump good. Magic had one of the biggest changes. In fact, it's almost accurate to say they blew it up and rebuilt it. Instead of the flexible cost based on intelligence, you have four tiers of spells. Base, Intermediate, Advanced, and Arcane. Your access to these tiers is dependent on your intelligence score. But fortunately, you don't have to buy the higher level. You have it automatically if you qualify. Oddly, they don't replace the spell system per se, but each is slightly altered. I don't mind the new system personally, due to it being a little more intuitive than the pairing of Added Effect and Maximum Xeon, which was a bit too crunchy in my opinion, but it's clear the change was made to be partnered with the new metamagic system that was introduced in Arcana Exit. Without it, it makes magic a little bit too much fire and forget. It's a mixed bag overall, and what you'd consider better is going to ultimately depend on your table. Combat has a welcome change by simplifying the calculation. This does mean that my talk of the combat table is now out of date, though. Instead of using that, the difference between attack and defense is converted into a percentage, and then used to calculate the final damage. Because of this approach, AT is merely written as subtracting 10 on the attack. On the inverse, if the defender wins the exchange, the counterattack bonus is half the difference, rounded down to the nearest 5. It doesn't completely make the system less calculator-reliant, but it certainly makes it easier to grasp. When it comes to core mechanics, there's several items to make note of. First, they drop the roll-under system for characteristic checks. Instead, you roll a d10 and add the characteristic score, comparing against the target number. Furthermore, the roll of 10 turns the roll into a 12. For contested rolls, participants with a 4-point advantage get a plus 2 modifier to the roll. While the contested part is a bit messy, I like that we're not doing the high-low problem again. Finally, I should note the mutation advantage. This allows characters to use monster abilities as if they had 20 points in Gnosis. I could see this being an interesting way to mix up characters who don't want to rely on supernatural ability. Now obviously, as usual, there's a lot that I'm skimming, most of it being the equivalent of the aforementioned errata and rebalancing. Overall, I'd say that the changes in Core Xset are a net positive, and the only real issue I have with changes to the magic system. To put on my game design hat a little bit, I could see myself putting in an advantage that at least gives incentive to use metamagic without cutting into magic level too much. Either way, the mileage you get out of Core Xset is going to be dependent on your table. It's not enough to change my grade on the original game. I'd still recommend it for those willing to take the plunge. As for the Xset trilogy, I'd say the three books are equally viable. But in terms of prioritizing which ones are worth the money first, I'd say get Dominus Xset first. The technique creation system and combat modules aren't as supported as much as I'd like in the original book. 
and having a wider pool of sample techniques can't hurt. Arcana Accent has plenty of items to offer, but I'd argue it does more for summoners than mages, since there were barely anything regarding great beasts in the original book. Furthermore, the metamagic system using magic level is something that I'm not entirely sure if I'm willing to sign off on, especially given the difficulty of increasing this level. Promethean Exet? Well, this isn't really a game that relies on magic items the way D&D would. It's a fine compendium for these, but I'd recommend getting it last. Also, while nothing has come of it, I have been hearing rumors here and there that Anima Project Studios is looking to find somebody else to handle translation, especially given the modest success that the Gate of Memories and the Nameless Chronicles video games ended up getting. If that's the case, I really hope they do get somebody to do it, because there's several books that I feel should have gotten translated and didn't. That and I don't want to see this game fade off into the dust. It deserves better.